Okay, so I just went, um, I went to Chinatown for Christmas, actually, because, uh, that's the only place you're going to be able to get food on Christmas. Make sure you went to a Jewish deli. It was really good. Got shakshuka. Shakshuka, that's how you say it. But I also went to, um, this really expensive thrift and also a Salvation Army. So I got quite a bit of stuff uh, that I will show you now. Um, I had, there's one... There's like three items that I'm not going to show in this haul that I will probably do a separate video on later. Um, but I figured I would show this to you first. Okay, so at, this, at the more expensive place, um, I got a few sport coats. $22, the yellow tags were half off, so half off. $11 for an Hermenegio Lasagna. Sport coat size, I think it's really small. I think it's a size 36 because this is it's a size 46 and Xenia sizes are 10 higher because they're Italian. Is this working sport? No, nope, not working surgeon's cuffs. Xenia sport coats are kind of iffy because the market's pretty glutted. Um, I would say the, the sport coats, if you can get them for 15 or less, I probably safe. I list these at 50 bucks and typically sell them for 35 or so. Um, which I'm, I'm willing to do. Uh, and this one is an older style. It's actually not vented. So, yeah, I don't know. That's an iffy, iffy buy for 11, but I didn't want to not empty it. And this is another one. This one got wrinkled because I had to put it in a bag. Um, it's not that bad. There's a, there's a few wrinkles. I'll be able to get that out. This is a navy blue blazer. Navy blue blazers do better than sport coats in my experience. The navy, bl the blazer, you can tell it's a, got metal cuffs, and this is that, that you know, that very um, distinct navy blue. This is also very thin in the back. It's basically half structured. There's a little bit of structuring in the front here, um, but it's it's fairly fairly unstructured. That brand is insignificant, I think. Robert Bingham, yeah, yeah. So Tom Michaels cut. What what is, what is important is that this is a Armenia Lasagna Trofeo. Super fine Australian wool fabric made, woven in Italy. Fabric manufacturer matters more for suits typically, like Laura Piana, for example. It's probably the biggest one. This was also half off of. Well, this was half of the eighteen, so I think it was for nine dollars. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty safe. I should get like again fifty bucks for that. <laughs> ignore whoever that is. Um, actually, I know who it is, but ignore that. Okay. And at the same place, uh, this is this was a bad buy, I think. I don't think these were great. Uh, but if you ever find this, these are apparently a bolo. Levi's Commuter Pro. Um, and I, I looked these up because they have this cord Cordura fabric or Cordura fabric. This stuff is expensive. Pretty much, uh, it's like this performance material. Um, I, I don't really know what to call it, but it's it's this really, really stretchy, performancey like heavier duty material that is really expensive that um if you find it probably look it up because it's probably worth it kind of like kind of like kevlar or gore-tex I, I think but this is not a vero as far as i know i don't put it in the title but i don't think it's a vero uh and it's yeah, you're not gonna be able to read that but it's levi's commuter pro these are 511s in a size 31 by 32 so a good size um really high sales on these i literally paid 18 which is a lot should be able to get 50 out of these though, which is, I'm, I'm okay with those margins. So it's not great, but it could definitely be worse with the margins. Um, okay, and then uh, this um, may or may not go to my dad, half off of seven. So for this Hawaiian Island Creations size extra large t-shirt, big graphic on it. There, Hawaiian Island Creations is kind of like crazy shirts in my experience. Um, they do fairly well. Not amazing, amazing, but, but pretty decent. And for three fifty, that is safe. This I paid eight dollars for, which is a little steep, but I should be able to get twenty five out of it. Uh, it's a Roan T-shirt with the tag cut out because Roan is like Lululemon. That happens. So assume men's medium, like a running vented. It's, there's like little holes in it, so you know, breathable stretch. Should get twenty five. Roan T-shirt so strong. Okay. And this was half off. It wasn't no, this wasn't half off. This was 30% off because the orange tags. Where are those? 
I don't know. This this used to have an orange tag on it, and it was thirty percent off of seven. So whatever that is, a built T-shirt, drop cut, lux, men's medium, dotted, has two XL through an eBay, built, strong brand. Pretty much pick it up. If it's under probably seven or eight bucks, I'd probably just pick up these T-shirts. That's what you're gonna find from them. Um, I don't think they do. If they do bottoms, I, I don't. They're pretty rare. Um, the, those t-shirts that you can get 20 to 25 plus shipping for, which is really good for a t-shirt. Same with Rome. Uh, or Lululemon, of course. Speaking of which, I have a lot of these. So I got uh, all of these Lululemon shorts. I have four of them. Cost me $10, which is a lot, but they're men's shorts. So I should be able to get at least 30 from them, which is uh, 10 into 30 is about, if I'm paying $10 for something, I want to get 30 plus shipping for it at the minimum. You know, assuming that I don't have to discount it. I'm, I'm assuming after the discount it might go down, but I'm willing to pay $10 for something that I expect will sell fast and for $30. And this, this um, is a pair of Lululemon shorts. It says it on the zipper pull that you cannot read, and it also has the logo there. Men's, I would assume medium, because all of the other shorts I found were medium, I assume from the same guy. I don't know what style these are. But they're like these, uh, they're lined, which is typically good. The line shorts typically have higher demand. Um, I, do these have a size dot? I'm not seeing a size dot on the inside, on the lining. That's typically where it is. It's typically on this inside pocket. Um, maybe it's here? Okay, yeah, they have, a, these are mediums, but they don't have a style code on them. So I don't know what these are. We'll probably go on Lulu Fanatics or ask Reddit if. Oh, if I have to, um, but yeah, these should be at least 30. Or at least I'm going to price them at 35 or 40 and see what happens. Um, and then yeah, so here come the uh, three other Lululemon shorts. Paid 10 for all of these. Men's medium. These are the Lululemon Surge short. Don't have a size dot, but I'm, I'm just looking at comps. These are Surge shorts. They have the same pocket and everything. They have the little thing on the back there. This is a weird pattern, so I should get 35 or 40 for it. Um, it's like this hatched thing, and that's that's why I picked all these up for 10. Because, um, this one's like a heathered gray pattern. This one's a little bit less crazy, but it's still got a bit of a more novel, unique pattern. Um, and I guess I should show you that the logo is there. This is a little bit more less unique, but still fairly not common. Typically, you're gonna find shorts in like solid. This one's definitely not common. Might get 40 or 45 for this, because this has like a geometric pattern on it. The stuff, the Lululemon's bottoms. No, I, I haven't experienced this with the tops, but the bottoms from Lululemon, especially in men's, um, if they have a weirder pattern like this, sell stupidly fast and for really good money. I have one more. I think, right? One, two. No, no, no. That's all four Lululemon's. This is a Hall of Famer, amazing brand, Icebreaker Merino. I've been finding it a lot recently. Men's 30, uh, almost ripped the material tag off accidentally, but it is like a mostly wool and a bit of cotton. Anything Icebreaker, these are not the, this is not the best type of thing. The best type of thing to find from Icebreaker is of course their Merino wool base layers, but these shorts still have over 100% sell through selling for like 35 or 40. Half off of, you can't see, but it was half off of 11, so I think 550 for those. Oh, okay. A few, I think this is the last item from that thrift store. Half off of seven for a basic marine layer t shirt. Have been found marine layer once and have been finding it just like ridiculously often now. It's kind of like, um, kind of like what happened with silver jeans for a little bit. I just found a whole bunch of it for like a month. Marine layer. Um, good. The t-shirts are good. They're 15 to 20 plus shipping. Um, and they have over 100% self-proof in the men's I'm fairly certain. Yeah, I think this is, this is a done bag. Now I have all this stuff in the boxes, which I already packed up, but I figured I would go to the lengths of, um, Uh, showing you them, and then I'll just put them back in the box. So this um, is not that other thrift store. This is a Salvation Army that was literally two levels 
had so much good stuff. I spent over $200 here. I almost never spend more than 150 at Salvation Army. Granted, the prices were higher, but I got a lot of cheaper stuff too, so I'm quite happy with it. This is a brand I've never found. A lot of brands that I've never actually found before in the thrift too. Public Rec is a higher-end athleisure brand, kind of like Viore, kind of like Lululemon, kind of like, kind of like Built. Um, athleisure stuff, I think. I might be wrong about that, but that's, that's all I found from them. I found two things. Just a long sleeve t-shirt. Should be worth like 35 or 40. Really high sell through. Almost 200% on these t-shirts in the men's larges. So, yeah. Uh, t-shirts were, long sleeves were $7 at this place. Shorts were 5 which is really nice. You don't get prices like that in the Bay Area very often. At least from my limited experience. Salvation Army in the Bay Area is the way to go because it's just so much cheaper. And if you're going for the first time, you're still going to find a lot of stuff. A lot of good stuff, too. Okay, I'm just trying to close the snap button on these. Uh, new with tags, Columbia hiking shorts. Not the right season, but I figure it should still sell because of new with tags. Uh, would have been better if I got these before Christmas because they could have been sold as a gift, have some writing on them, I don't care. So going to list them as new with tags. 10, uh, women's size 10. Basic for five bucks, that's safe. 25 maybe, I'm not completely sure how much I should get for those. Oh, uh, these were from the uh, the other, the more expensive thrift store that wasn't the Salvation Army. Out of the Closet, I think it was called. Fox size 34 Ranger shorts. Ranger, half, this was half of 11, so 550. These are camo as well. They have a few runs on them and a couple marks like in the back here. But uh, I figured 550 was strong enough because these are camo cargo shorts, which is one of the strongest. Camo cargo is one of the best combinations you're gonna have anyways. And Fox shorts are really strong. These Ranger shorts have over 100% sell through. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, for 550, that's, that's not that hard of a, big of a commitment. Uh, okay. Um, this, uh, the long pants were eight, so they just, oh, and this was a white tag, so this is half off. This was $4. Um, long sort of, I guess, sweatpants? Because they've got this elastic waist and Although they have this, it's weird, it's like an elastic waist with the button front from this brand, Oscar, that I looked up, like 40% sell through, really bad, but nothing was selling for less than $50. Um, it's made in the Czech Republic, designed in Germany. Uh, I don't know, sell through was meh, but again, probably minimum 50 bucks. Might price these at like 80 because they're a little bit more novel. If I can find the, the name, the specific style, uh, that will allow me to pinpoint a price, it's a bit of wear. But you know, for four bucks, that's a really good buy. And that constitutes a lot of the stuff here. Like, I got very little low dollar at this place. Pretty much nothing was low dollar. Here is a pair of sweatpants from, I wonder if you recognize that logo from a few seconds ago. Size 30 by 30, which is weird. I don't know why they list it as 30 by 30, but it's public rec again. So, public rec is not the same thing as public record. I learned that one time in a thrift store and I was like confused like are they the same are they not as far as I can tell they are not the same company public record is pretty bad public rec is really good again like 35 40 maybe 50 bucks for these although they do have a little stain on them is that looks like that might come out in the wash so I'm gonna put these um, in my wash pile which is over here and I just realized I have stuff in my wash pile that I want to show you so at that same place, uh, this this is not my wash pile. My dad may want it. Short sleeves were I think five dollars, so I got this for five dollars. Untuck it, extra large. This is like one of the nylon, stretchy ones, the like synthetic material, just basic button ups. I find that these do better than the cotton ones, unless the cotton ones are flannel or, um, unless the cotton ones are flannel or a big size. I find that the nylon stuff works better. And then this, this is another brand that I know is good, but never found it before. It's another athleisure brand. This is a pair of sweatpant joggers, which is one of the best, pretty much the best item to find from an athleisure company, barring like puffer jackets or something. You can never find those. American Giant, made in USA, size medium. These also have a few stains on them, marks, a bit of wear. Not really any pilling. 
American Giant, really crazy sell-through on these, way over five times sell-throughs. Again, 35, 40, baby 50, because these are sweatpant joggers. Joggers just do so well. So athleisure wear is here to stay, as far as I can tell, in terms of stuff that's fashionable. This is a bolo that um, I've never heard anyone talk about. This is a pair of vintage Levi's. They're vintage Levi's orange tab, which is really nice. Um, they're, of course, the 90s orange tab, not the 70s orange tab. That would be really crazy. And these were made in Mexico, which is kind of weird. But what the keyword on this tag, it's the paper tag, but keyword on this tag, pair of 550s, is that word student. Levi's student jeans um, are really strong. I sold a pair of 501 students for, I think, $80 in like a week. Um, I, I don't know how, much, how good the 550s are, but I figure they're probably somewhat comparable. These are in really good condition. They were hemmed, actually, and then I just like cut the hemming so there's a fold there, but I don't think that's a big deal. That may come out um, with a bit of... Actually, I don't know. That fold is probably going to stay. But size student jeans. And these are orange tabs as well. And they were $10. The denim was all $10 at this place. Didn't expect to find vintage Levi's, but I did. And they're a really underrated cut. Hey! Jeez. I kind of have a cold, I think. I just touched, ah, okay, I'm gonna wash, I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay, so I don't wanna touch the merchandise with my grimy hands. This thing is gonna go in the wash because I did touch it with those, but um, it's a really good, Second time I've found this brand, Fairty. These are kind of corduroy. I don't know if this counts as corduroy. They're like fake corduroy. Um, bit of pilling. I don't care. It's Fairty. Cost me, is this eight? Yeah, $8. Men's size 32. Fairly certain these are men's 32. Yeah. They are basic, like, chinos, maybe. Although they are kind of corduroy. I don't know. Fairty, anything, buy it. Don't care what it is. Should get 50 for these. I just keep using the, the number 50 because I just, that's like a very solid estimate, I think, for what it is. This I might not get 50 for, I might get 35, 25 or 30. Um, Vince, weird, uneven brand, but sometimes can have really good, really good sell through, really good prices. Sweaters are probably the best thing to find from them. Also, if you ever find a sport coat or a suit, that can be really good. These are made in USA, like uh, gray jeans in a men's. We have a size, men's 34. Um, should be safe. I figure Vince jeans can't be bad, at, at the very least, are not going to be bad items. Sell through might be low, but the prices will be high enough that I can undercut the market. This is uh, the first, I found three of this brand right at the beginning um, on a new clothing rack at the Salvation Army and just like never slowed down from there. Taylor Stitch, one of the strongest brands that I know of. It's just anything from them will sell. Absolutely anything. They just make this like casual wear. This is just a basic pair of chinos. I could wear this, really. I, I might actually just wear this. Um, but if I didn't, if I don't, it's at least 50 bucks. These are slim fits. Slim Fit Chinos, um, just really, really solid. They have a little wear, little little marks on the back. Don't care, paid $8 for these, I assume, right? Yeah, $8. Taylor Stitch should get at least 50. South through is crazy strong, like three or four times. Um, Another really strong. This is this and Untucket are the two dresser brands that are like pretty much universally good. Mizzen and Main paid. These are long sleeves, so I paid seven for these. This is the medium trim fit, like gingham plaid, basic button up shirt, um, that wrinkle free material. Should have absolutely no trouble selling that for thirty or so. This was I think three bucks probably. Long sleeve, or not long sleeve, but men's large Nike dry fit, or Nike football, Nike football, authentic soccer or whatever. 
But it says Nike football on the back somewhere. Let me see it. Yeah, Nike football there. Um, Manchester United jersey. Uh, I have seen these sell for over 40. Um, probably going to price them around 25, though, just because the sell through isn't phenomenal. Here's another. This is the same size, same guy, definitely. All right, right next to each other. Taylor Stitch. Chinos, khakis, again, could be mine, potentially. Um, just a phenomenal brand, anything Taylor Stitch. And it's not a brand that's ever really marked up, because it doesn't really look like anything remarkable, and it isn't really remarkable, frankly. I, I don't really know why their stuff is so desired, but I know that they used to make their stuff in Portugal, but they don't anymore, so I don't know. This I learned from Big Yambo. Literally, the day that I went to this place, I saw him find this exact item, and, I, and then my dad found it. I was like, what? That was weird. Oros, as apparently a bolo, this is worth, at, like, at least, like, 80, I think. Sell-through is 100%. It's like a quarter zip. It's like this padded in the front. I don't know what to call these. But, uh, it's a outdoors brand, I assume. Maybe it's, maybe it's like an aviation brand? I'm, I don't know. Um. But... Yeah, really good sell through, and really high prices for this basic quarter zip, and minimum fifty, absolute bare minimum fifty. Okay, and this this is an experiment. So this I'm gonna probably list at like twenty or twenty five. Paid seven for it. It's a sweater from Theory that you might notice has a pretty damn large hole right in the middle of it. So that's that is not a small hole by any means, but it's from Theory, and the material. Is 100% cashmere. So it's really hard for me to pass up on 100% cashmere theory, which is a really good brand to find. Theory is kind of like Vince, kind of like John Barbados, kind of like Mark New York. That sort of tier of things where this type of sweater is going to be really good from them. A lot of the comps were at 50. I think the lowest comp is 35. I figure a common price is at 25. And it's a th despite the fact that it has a whole it's a Theory 100% cashmere sweater, and I should still be able to sell it. I don't know if that's actually the case, because that's a, it's a damn big hole. But, um, I, I'm testing it out. It's a $7 experiment. Worst case scenario, it will sell for 15 There's no way nobody's going to pick up a Theory cashmere sweater for $15. That's just, I cannot see that happening. It's going to be picked up. But... Uh, I don't know for how much. I might just price it at the bottom of the market initially because, um, you know, some, somebody might buy it. Because um, it's a fairly lightweight sweater, so maybe people will wear it, not like a base layer, but like a base and then like wear, you know, maybe not wear it over something, maybe wear it under something. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, and this is the third and last Taylor Stitch item I found. This is a particularly really good item. Might be worth over 100 Taylor Stitch jeans, men's size 30 slim fit. Two very special things about this, this pair of jeans. First of all, I want you to look at the material tag. It is 58% cotton, 42% hemp. I'm, I'm not going to try to show you because it's not going to show up. But hemp is a really desirable um, fabric. Probably more desirable than linen, which I believe linen's made from flax, although I've heard that linen can be made from both flax or hemp. Regardless, it is hemp. Really strong, especially in the summer, a ridiculously strong fabric. One of the best, probably the best summer fabric, um, su summer material, summer fabric, I guess you could count seersucker, but that already makes these at least like 60 or 70, and then on top of that, these jeans are, um, Something that I don't find very often at all. These jeans are selvage. Um, I don't know if all Taylor Stitch jeans are selvage, but these are. And if you find jeans that are selvage, pick them up probably. Uh, at, at least look them up. The thing is, I, it's a weird tip to say pick up selvage jeans because selvage jeans are like... You're not going to know if jeans are selvage. Um... Unless, because the only way to tell that these jeans are selvage is by literally looking in the crotch here and then looking down and then you'll see that and that tells you that they're selvage. 
or that you look at the bottom here. But you're not going to notice either of those things when you're flicking through, flipping through the genes at a you know fairly even at a slower rate. You're probably still not going to see that. But if you do happen to come upon genes that are that look nice and they are salvaged, definitely look them up because salvaged genes are worth so much more than are pretty much universally valuable. Um, like vintage Levi's, certain vintage Levi's are salvage and if you find like a pair of vintage Levi's 501s, it doesn't really matter if they're like big E or whatever. If they're salvage, probably worth at least at least a hundred, maybe over a hundred and fifty. This is a Nuba Tags North Face jacket. Uh, with some company logo on it. I don't know what that is. Actually, it looks fairly sleek, so I'm okay with it. Uh, but I figured new with tags or face. <laughs> Cost me 13 Monarch, whatever that is. This is, it also has a style name on it, so I don't have to look that up. It's nice. It is the all weather jacket. Just a windbreaker. Not really a rain jacket, just a windbreaker. Lowest active comps for the new with tags were 45, or 50, and. I don't remember with free shipping or not, but this is lightweight. This will go first. This will go first class. about that point is probably worth it I have one of these in my size um, this is a women's small so this isn't great it's a sweater fleece sweater from cool dad found this for me cost me seven dollars cool sweater should be at 35 or 40 women's small so maybe like maybe 30 this is a good brand um, that I've never found before I, I remember hearing that it was good it's a turtleneck sweater from that brand, from this brand. I think this is the front because it has the pockets. Turtleneck sweater, and it is from Garden Hill. So it's extra small, which is um, not a great size, but over 100% sell through on these, and they're over 100% sell through. And this one's flawless, unlike the theory. It's wool, but it's actually a wool cashmere blend. So. Yeah, should get at least 35, probably maybe 50 for this. Bigger size, definitely at least 50. But it's oversized, so um, I will put that in the thing and probably encourage a sale. Another similar item. This was $8. Never heard of this brand before, um, but this is made with that same quarter of fabric that I mentioned before, so I looked it up. Edge Veil. It's like this technical really heavy duty work pant, um, kind of carpenter pants style, but they don't have the carpenter pants loop, so I think I have to call these cargo pants or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, they have um, two XL through on these, nothing sells for less than 50 in terms of the pants, and these are in really good condition, so I'll probably price these around 80. Eight bucks into 80 is you know, almost 10 in your money, right? Okay, this is another pair of salvage jeans. This one is Redline imitating. So, uh, vintage Levi's um, were salvage jeans had these like red stitches. This has just got the like red uh, mark there. I think that's just to imitate it, you know, to because that's desirable. If you find vintage Levi's that are Redline, again, probably over one hundred and fifty dollars. Never heard of that brand, but it's Imogene and Willie. Looks made in USA. So, yeah, should be worth over 100. Sell through is about 100%. It's a good size, 32, I think, and they're fairly long inseams, too. Same story with this Raleigh, Raleigh jeans. Uh, Raleigh denim, Jones jeans, men's size 30, made in USA, made in North Carolina, and they, are, uh, they have a bit of wear. Don't care, though, I paid 10 bucks for them because very well worth it. Raleigh. And also happen to be salvage. No red line, but salvage. I'm not gonna, you know, just high dollar item after high dollar item just kept coming. This is not high dollar, one of the few like lower dollar sales. You'll find a few more lower dollar pieces as we go. Get to the end here. Lacoste 
Pima Cotton T-shirt basic says 2XL cost me three bucks. Should get 20 for it. Lacoste T-shirts are strong. I love Lacoste. One of my favorite brands. And they're this is a Pima Cotton Lodal blend. It's so soft. It's just it's so nice. I love the material. I was really happy when I found this because I haven't found this brand in a while, and it's one of the best brands that I know of. Smart Wool Women's Medium. It's like 10XL through. Should get 30 or 35 for these. For this, it's like a women's quarter zip, women's medium. 100% merino wool has a hole there, has a few marks, don't care, it's smart wool. And it, smart wool always has flaws, basically not even a bad thing at this point. It just also, this is a, it's a dead stock vintage thing from Varnay, which I believe is a, I think that's how you say it, Varnay. Made in USA vintage dead stock Varnay, like quarter zip, maybe polo shirt? This might be like a quarter zip t-shirt, I don't know what to call this. It's like got a, it's a collared weird dead stock vintage thing. Although it does have a it does have a mark on it. I don't know where the mark is. It's not single stitch, but it's made in USA. And Vernet, it's got the big graphic on the back. I'm Vernet France, made in USA, hundred percent cotton. Not great sell through on these, but since this one has the weird collar and is dead stock, I figured I'd pay this is five bucks for it. Unless it was, no, this was half off, so I don't know. Um, this is a Levi's Premium, which is like weird. So, so Levi's Premium is annoying because it makes you think that you found the Holy Grail, but you haven't. Notice how it's Big E. These have Big E tabs, but they're not actually like legitimate Levi's Big E. They're just the modern recreate recreation. Size 32 by 34, really good size. Paid eight for these because he didn't count these as jeans, but they're like khaki denim, um, 5'11s. Should get 35 for these, uh, cause they're weird size, weird color, really good size. 32 by 34 is like maybe the best size of pants that I know of. Weird like belted chino, almost ch like sweatpants, hiking pants, I don't know from Mountain Hardware. And they're men's small, but bottoms, men's small bottoms, like hiking through pants, do really well for me. I presume because of people who hike and climbing pants too, they typically are smaller people. So I assume that's why they do well. This this was a bad, wasn't a bad buy. Wasn't as good of a buy. It cost me $8 for a Prana. These are the Zion roll-up pants. I didn't look the style up. I just knew this is what Prana Zion is, and they're roll-up because... Look up in front there, you see that, that snap button that doesn't seem like it goes to anything, and then you have the thing there. So what you do is you roll these up, and then this, this, you roll them up, and that snaps into that. So it like, when you wade, or maybe for climbers or something. The reason why these were a bad buy was because they have a hole in them. There. Should still get like 20 for these, though, because the Zion pants don't go for less than 25, and... Sell through is really strong, like five or six times sell through. What is this? Oh, another marine layer T-shirt. This one's made in USA, so I don't know if that's a good thing. It has a carrot on it. Maybe marine layer carrot T-shirts are good or something. I don't know. It has that really nice like Lacoste feeling too. I don't. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, new with tags, North Face again. Got the company logo on it. Who cares? New with tags. Ridgewell vest for, I think, five. And finally, last item. This is a brand that I've never heard talked about really before. South Pole. It's kind of like Abercrombie. This weird Y2K brand. Often, like, the jeans have, like, three or four sell through. So for, like, 25 or 30. This is, like, a weird vest. Not as good sell through as I thought there would be, but I figured the vests were, I think, $4. So, safe. Okay, and I think that's it. Um, that second haul was really large, like really big. I think I got 30 items from that one thrift store, and they're almost all really solid, like higher dollar items. Um, didn't really gamble on them. I just spent a lot of money, got a lot of good items. Um, this is the, what? Rally and Imogene and Willie. Edgevale, Theory, Cool. All of these dudes, 
all gone back in this box. I think they shouldn't be treating my inventory like this. Okay, um, I am now going to go film that other video about the weird, potentially crazy expensive item that I found at the first thrift store. This is a 35 minute long video. Okay.